Education Committee is called to order. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Cleveland. Here. Light. Here. Bishop. Here, I think they said my name. Joe Jones. Santana. Here. Madam Chair, you have a form. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, today's hearing, um, of course, is being held on Zoom, and I will read the necessary disclaimer before we get started. Please be, be advised the following meetings held during the COVID-19 emergency declaration will be conducted as virtual meetings in accordance with Ohio's open meetings law as provided by sub House Bill 197. And of course, the public may observe these meetings on YouTube and on Cleveland's um, City of Cleveland TV 20, as and also on the City Council website. Um, uh, we're being streamed live. And today's transportation committee, we have several pieces of legislation to hear. And immediately following that, we will have a presentation from the Department of Port Control on the upcoming airport master plan. And uh, with that, um, wait a minute. Okay, I lost my screen for a minute. Okay, um, with that, we will begin legislation, bear with me. I'm working on two screens. Uh, good morning, Director Kennedy. Good morning, Council Chairperson and the committee. Okay, okay, are you ready? Yes, ma'am, we are. Okay, we will start with ordinance number Four seventy one dash twenty twenty by Council Members Cleveland and Kelly by departmental request authorize the Director of Port Control to exercise the first option to renew contract number CTLS twenty eighteen dash zero eighteen with Arrow Mag two thousand CLE LLC for the lease of space in the North Cargo Facility Building for the operation of aircraft de-icing support and vehicle maintenance facility at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. And I will turn the floor over to you, Director. Director Kennedy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairperson, members of the committee. Uh, the airlines here at Cleveland Hopkins uh, form a consortium to handle the uh, aircraft de-icing uh, during the winter time as we're all already gearing up for winter weather. Uh, this is their space. Aeromeg is the company that the airlines have selected uh, to do that de-icing of the aircraft. So they need cargo, uh, they need support services, facilities um, to have equipment and um, uh, maintenance of that equipment. Uh, it is roughly uh, 21,000 square feet in our North Cargo building. Uh, the rate is uh, $4,000 a month or $49,000 per year. And that's based on a recent independent third party appraisal of 225 per square foot uh, for the space. And uh, for this, we're asking for the, um, the council's approval. Okay, and again, this is the first option to renew? Yes, ma'am, yeah, one of three. Uh, what was the length of the original contract? I don't have the uh, the amount. I would think it would be close to the same, but I, I will get the amount of the uh, the original. Can you call? Yeah. Okay. The monthly rental, you said it's $4,000? 4083 on a, a recent uh, uh, appraisal. Uh, can I ask you, uh, when you say recent, um, this pre-COVID or since COVID? Uh, I think it's been since the uh, first of the year. I don't know if it was prior to uh, March 17th or, uh, or after. Uh, uh, appraisals have been a little slow since March 17th, um, but uh, we'll find that out as well. But it okay. was 
uh, one that was done this year is my understanding. Okay. I'm just wondering, it's probably too early to tell, you know, what impact COVID is going to have on rents at the airport. I was just curious. I, okay. I, 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 Madam Chairperson, yes, I agree. As far as rental rates, um, I think it is a little early to see the long, longer term uh, effect of that since these are yearly agreements or longer term agreements. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the committee? Okay, seeing that no questions, uh, ordinance number 471-2020 is approved. And I'm used to saying, please sign it up, but uh, you can do that in your head. <laughs> <laughs> ordinance number 472-2020 by council members Cleveland and Kelly, by departmental request authorizing the director of port control to exercise the first option to renew contract number CTLS 2018-013 with, with Av Flight Services Corporation for the lease of space in the passenger terminal building at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport to support its ground handling operation for Allegiant Air. And director? Uh, Madam Chairperson, member of, of the committee, uh, the airlines of Legion Air, in this case, uh, subcontract out their local ground handling. Uh, ground handling is the handling of baggage, the pushing in and out of the aircraft, all those services to the aircraft uh, to um, uh, AV flight services. Uh, Allegiant is one of our ultra low cost carriers and they rely on contracted services uh, to provide uh, uh, in each of their cities. So. Uh, Allegiant is flying the aircraft, Avair is providing the manpower to accommodate the handling of the aircraft, and this is uh, uh, based upon the rates and charges that we charge to the airlines that are calculated every year. Uh, as you know, we have a master lease with the airlines, uh, which is evaluated every year uh, to determine what the airline lease rates are and um, it uh, holds to that uh, as we go forward with this. And for this, we ask for this uh, first option to be renewed. Okay, and again, what, what's the rental rate? Uh, the, the rental rate uh, will be established when we evaluate rates and charges this year for the airlines through the master lease uh, formula, uh, which I would expect would go up because the airlines shoulder uh, the cost here at the airport. Okay. Do you have Do you have any idea when that might? Be? Uh, we typically do it towards the uh, the end of the year uh, when we have our our final numbers in to passengers and and cost of the uh, of the airport uh, operations. Uh, this is this facility that uh, Abflight has is a roughly 207 square feet, not a big space. Uh, but uh, those rates and charges we discuss with our annual meeting with the airlines uh, at the end of the year. Okay, D Director, so when does their lease actually expire? And will they just pay the current, re current rate until the new rate is established? Okay, the uh, current um, lease, I want to say, you know, I've got to read it here, I'm sorry. Uh, I was saying it was December, but uh, you, that was when it was passed. I don't know the exact uh, date. I had it December in my mind, but something else we'll find for you very shortly on when it is up. I, I would assume December, but I want to make sure that we're, we're good on that date before I tell you. Uh, the estimated rate uh, for the 200 square feet as it, w uh, as it stands now will be right around $17,913. Okay, thank you. So, um, yeah, if you could provide that information to us, um, you know, before we could, uh, go to the committee the whole next week. Uh, yes, so ma'am. Okay, okay. Are there any other questions on Ordinance 472 20 
Okay, seeing no other questions, uh, ordinance 472 2020 is approved. Please, ahead. Ordinance number 473 2020 by Council Members Cleveland and Kelly by departmental request authorizing the director of port control to exercise the first option to renew contract number LS 2018 019 with Worldwide Flight Service. Inc. for the lease of space in the South Cargo Facility Building at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport for the operation of air cargo facility. Director Kennedy. Thank you, Ma Madam Chairpersons, members of the committee. Uh, similar to AV, Air, or AV flight that we just talked about, the airlines contract out uh, cargo services as well. Uh, that's uh, plus that's receiving, dispatching, and distributing cargo. Worldwide Flight Services is a provider of that services to multiple airlines. Uh, they have had a facility in, uh, in our South Cargo. It's 3,680 square feet. And uh, the rental rate uh, uh, as it stands right now is $24,500 per year. Uh, we intend to do a independent third-party appraisal it should not go lower, uh, again, for the earlier reason that we talked about the, the COVID-19 impact on airline, or excuse me, on uh, lease rate uh, probably won't be felt for some time, uh, but it will be uh, whatever the third party appraisal, but I wouldn't expect it to go less than 24,500 annually. Okay, thank for you. For this, we seek your approval. Uh, and uh, do you have the... Uh the lease terminate, the, the end of the lease date with you right now, or is this another one you think? I'll have to, uh, yes, ma'am, I'll have to uh, get the, uh, uh, the, the actual lease date. I would imagine it would be near the, the same as the other for F flight, but we'll get that confirmation before Committee of the Whole to you. Okay. Great, great. And that, that's not by way of criticism. It's actually, um, you know, it, it's, it's good that we're looking and planning at a time, but particularly when our scheduling and everything is is is, is sort of off, off base right now. So, you know, we can have that done in plenty of time. We won't be rushing to try to renew something or, or, or missing a deadline for trying to renew in a timely manner. Um, any other questions on 473-2020? Okay, seeing that uh, ordinance-473 ordinance is approved, please sign it up. Ordinance number 474-2020 by council members Cleveland and Kelly by departmental request, determining the method of making the public improvement of repairing, maintaining, and installing concrete on runways, on runways, taxiways, ramps, and roadways, and other surfaces for the divisions of the Department of Port Control and authorizing the director of port control to enter into one or more public improvement requirement contracts for the making of the improvement for a period of two years with, with two one-year options to renew, the first of which shall require additional legislative authority. The estimated cost of this contract is $650,000. Director Kennedy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairperson, members of the committee. Uh, there are two parts of, uh, of this. Uh, we have federal requirements uh, under FAA uh, to maintain taxiways, uh, runways, and uh, our uh, airfield areas uh, to certain standards. Uh, those are requirements of, uh, uh, of operating a safe and secure airport. Uh, and addition to that, this concrete work and maintaining and installing the, uh, beyond the airfield also includes our roadways, uh, which uh, um, get a lot of wear and tear. So we are asking for this public improvement contract uh, to uh, work with uh, Cook Paving, which has uh, been a very good pay, uh, um, vendor for us. They've been out here for a number of years, uh, supplied a lot of uh, uh, good work that meets the FAA standards, and we're asking for the approval uh, to, uh, to uh, seek a, uh, a new public improvement uh, requirements contract. And, okay. Um, all right, the, the current contract, excuse me, ma'am, the current contract runs out on September 9th. Okay. Um, and Cook is the, the um, your, your current contractor? Yes, ma'am. Cook is our current contractor. Okay. 
so this this will have to go out to bid then and, and they'll be open for any any qualified contractor to bid right yes ma'am okay all right uh other questions any other questions or comments from the committee okay seeing none ordinance number 474-2020 is approved um and we'll go uh, all of these uh the legislation we heard today will be heard at committee of the whole uh right council president okay very good okay um that is the legislation oh i'm sorry whoa <laughs> If you want them on, they're on. <laughs> okay, great. And um, we have two more pieces. I'm sorry. Um, again, I'm working off of two screens, and it, it's a little confusing today. Ordinance number 511-2020 by Council Members Cleveland and Kelly by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Port Control to exercise the first option to renew contract number LS 2018-23 with Southwest Airlines Company to lease cargo space at building number 216 at the South Cargo Facility of Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. Director? Uh, Madam Chairperson, members of the community uh, of the committee, uh, Southwest Airlines is an airline uh, that operates its own cargo facilities here at uh, Cleveland Hopkins. We talked earlier about worldwide, uh, they provide service for a lot of airlines. Southwest does their own cargo handling here. Uh, they've been in a facility that is uh, approximately 6,400 square feet. Uh, they've been a good tenant, good airline here at uh, Cleveland Hopkins. Uh, the rate uh, currently is $47,260, uh, uh, and uh, we're going to do an independent uh, third-party appraisal to validate the, the, the appraisal number. Uh, we don't expect it going down. Uh, but uh, uh, we uh, have a requirement among our, our practices here to do those, uh, um, uh, those uh, appraisals. Uh, so right now we're asking for uh, the, um, uh, the option, to, uh, the lease term of two years with three one-year options to renew. Uh, and uh, um, for this, we ask the committee's approval. Okay. And... We assume Southwest has been, a, been a, an excellent tenant. Yes, ma'am. They've been an excellent partner, not only on their cargo, but also their passenger service at the airport. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions on Ordinance 511-2020? Okay, hearing Ordinance 511-2020 is approved. Or Ordinance number 536-2020 by council members Cleveland and Kelly by departmental request authorize director of port control to exercise the first option to renew contract number CTLS 2019-0004 with Cleveland National Air Show Inc. for the lease of office space, airfield and airport facilities at Cleveland Burke Lakefront Airport to conduct an air show and related events. Director. Madam Chairperson, members of the committee, uh, the National uh, Cleveland National Air Show has been a great partner, absolutely wonderful partner. Uh, this year, they're uh, having to uh, cancel the uh, the air show, but we're all hoping that things return. They have office space at Burke Lakefront Airport. Uh, they have an agreement with us, uh, and they would like to renew um, uh, the, for two years with three one-year options. Uh, to renew. This is the first option uh, term requiring uh, a legislative authority. Uh, it's for $25,000 uh, at $25,891 uh, for 1,523 square feet uh, of their, for their office at Burke Lakefront. It is $17 per square foot. Uh, and uh, we would uh, seek uh, the council's approval uh, to renew this uh, with them, and hopefully we'll all be in enjoying the National Air Show this almost this time next year. I certainly hope you're right, Director. Um, yeah, that's another big event that um, you know we missed out on this year. 
Uh, are there any other questions on ordinance 536-20? Hearing none, ordinance 536-2020 is a, please sign it up. Okay, and that concludes the legislative portion of the meeting and we're gonna move right uh, directly into the, the Hopkins and presentation and Director Kennedy, I will turn the floor and the screen over to you. Uh, thank you, ma'am, Madam Chairperson. We're going to bring up the presentation that we'll go through today. Thank you uh, for this time. Um, we've got our young people in here operating, <laughs> operating the technology. Uh, I heard from Councilperson Santana. She was talking about uh, the challenges earlier of Zoom meetings, and I certainly have my challenges with Zoom meetings. So can you get to the first slide, sir? We're on the last slide, you got to go to the first slide. Yeah. Uh, we thank you for this time. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different presentation if we, than we had originally planned. Uh, over the last uh, few years, we've had very good growth above the national average uh, for our airport. Our airline partners have been investing in Cleveland significantly, and the, um, the marketplace has been responding. Uh, as late as the first couple of weeks in February of this year, uh, we had three airlines looking to make a, a, a sizable investment in Cleveland for the future. Uh, in fact, January and February of this year, our uh, passenger numbers exceeded our forecast, and uh, we were looking at a whole different set of issues. And then came COVID which changed our world. Uh, so we're talking, we all are confident that the industry will rebound one day and we need to position the airport, the community, the city, our citizens, the, the groups that we serve for that future. And, and as it says on our first slide, quarter century vision. And Madam Chairperson, you were at our executive committee meeting yesterday uh, and you heard a lot about what the work that's got to be done over the next few months for us. So our agenda today, a, a quick overview of, uh, of CLE. We have a solid history, ever-changing, our strong position. We have a bright future, and then some questions and answers. So let's go to the overview. We broke this down into what I had just talked about uh, uh, the TSA throughput is our outbound passengers uh, that we have. This is, uh, we monitor this daily now. Uh, if you go back to a uh, similar time, uh, if you go back annually um, uh, last year, even though it says daily, uh, daily average up there, we had over 5 million people that went through the TSA checkbook. And so far, um, our forecast for this year is saying that's gonna drop by more than 3 million uh, to 2.1. That's just people leaving. Uh, you would, uh, the way our, uh, our passenger, um, uh, passengers are, we have about the same number of people leaving as arriving. So last year we saw over 10 million uh, passengers or guests here. Uh, this year we're forecasting less than 5 million, a significant drop. Uh, daily landings, um, uh, we, uh, um, this is uh, not a daily number, this is an average number. Uh, uh, the, we had about 54,000 landings last year. Our forecast again for this year is 22,000 passengers we talked about. Airlines, uh, you see that pre-COVID we had 11 airlines here operating. We now have 10. Uh, Air Canada does have plans to come back. But as the discussions between the United States and Canada continue to lengthen out that uh, prohibition against transborder, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, not sure when that will come back. Additionally, Air Canada has had a significant reduction in staff. Cargo airlines, uh, city employees, uh, you also see down there total airport employees. Uh, this is... Uh, this is a number I hate to report. Uh, in 
2019, we had an average of 7,500 employees. This is airlines, cargo handlers, uh, uh, service providers, concessionaires here. Our latest number from our security office is that we're 1,300 badges down. And that's 1,300 people that don't have a job here uh, that did have a job last year. And in fact, our forecast for this year with the investments by the carriers uh, that were planned, uh, we're, we were gonna significantly increase that number. Next slide, please. So this is in a nutshell what has happened to us. Uh, 2014 number that you see there is the number uh, when we were de-hub by United. Uh, we showed strength in 16, 15, 16, and 17, 18, 19 was the best year we'd had in almost 11 years. Uh, you can see the red line that starts on the, on the left side of the screen. Uh, our January and February were above forecast. Uh, in fact, February, we started seeing some impact in the last week from COVID, and we still exceeded forecast. Uh, it went to a bottom in April. Uh, May was a little better. And you see the gray lines there where it says forecast. We, we do a, uh, a worst case, best case uh, scenario in forecasting. And that top line, top gray number was we, uh, what we thought would be our best case, and we were tracking along that until recently. Uh, the forward looking for the next 60 days, particularly uh, in our industry with the uh, schedules and our conversations with the air carriers, is that we're gonna fall below that. I always like to point out the little blue dot on the blue line in 2016. That is the uh, Republican National Convention uh, it was a huge influx uh, into Cleveland, but the very next year, the very next um, uh, summer, uh, we exceeded that. We did it again in 18 and did it again in 19, and we were forecasted to do it again this year. That is obviously not going to happen. Next one. Uh, one of the things that we're very, very proud of is what is driving this growth? Um, we went back to 2013, and we get to track this from, uh, 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 from USDOT information, is that in 2013, only 7 out of 10, or almost 8 out of 10 people that traveled by air from our area really went out of Cleveland Hopkins. 21% uh, 21, uh, 21 went out of Akron, and 1% went out of Youngstown. Well... Going forward to 2019, 92% of people selected in Hopkins. Uh, Youngstown is, has no more commercial air service, and Akron Canton is only 7% of the, of the travelers. So that's a way that we have been able to influence the marketplace. And then you say, how do you influence the marketplace? Uh, a lot of things that happen uh, in between those those dates and the fact that we got the ultra low cost carriers, our average air fares went out significantly, and we concentrated on our uh, passenger experience here. Um, we have an old facility that we're gonna talk about in a little bit, but using that and doing a lot of things that we could do operational modifications helped drive this to be the airport of choice. And that's a significant increase in the percentage of people who actually travel by air that selected Hopkins over other options. So this is, was helping drive uh, a lot of our uh, traffic that we saw on the, on the uh, roadway, uh, the more airlines, the more service, the bigger aircraft. Next slide, please. And that investment that I talk about by the carriers uh, is in seats. Uh, you look at 2015, uh, we had uh, 10 million, uh, a little over 10 million seats invested by the carriers, and you see the numbers as they go up. In 2017, over 2016, the airlines invested almost a million more seats into the marketplace here. Almost a million. That was faster growth than a lot of airports in this country for our size. 
Uh, and one of the things that we've heard recently, and uh, particularly last year, as we were looking about our master plan and going forward is, well, that growth was only coming in the ultra-low-cost uh, low carriers. Well, this demonstrates that it's been across the board. The legacy carriers have grown from 17 uh, to 19 by almost uh, 700,000. Uh, the uh, low-cost carriers grew by about 200,000, and the low cost, ultra-low-cost grew by about a, uh, 100,000. So that investment was across the board, and those American, United, Delta, Southwest, in the blue there, is significant in, in investment here. And uh, uh, that required us to think about critical aircraft type uh, that we would have in the future, and also bigger and better investments by more than just one airline here in Cleveland. Next slide, please. Uh, one more representation of, uh, of the way that uh, our, com our uh, community has changed here. Uh, if you've gone back uh, before the de-hubbing, I think United had about 69, 65% of all the traffic. Uh, January, February of this year, United was 25%. Uh, March through June, they're about 18%. And I think if you look the last 60 days, it's significantly less. American has emerged uh, along with uh, Southwest, Frontier, and Delta uh, as our biggest carriers. Uh, United, I think, is fifth largest carrier for us now. And then Spirit has really been making a lot of investments into our airport as well. Uh, they came back after COVID uh, initial impacts with a lot of service in, in June that helped drive our numbers up. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we just had a, a conversation, Todd Payne, our uh, chief of marketing air service, we just had a, a conversation with Spirit's leadership last Friday to talk about the upcoming year. And we're doing that with every uh, airline out there. In fact, we have monthly corporate airline uh, um, meet, virtual meetings. Oh, I thought it was somebody had a question. Uh, so that we keep up with what what's going what's what is going on and what is happening, a lot of the normal tools that we would have in this in this business about predicting the future uh, are no longer valid uh, to us. And so uh, communication, transparency are key. And um, most recently. Uh, there was uh, the investment by the carriers here, is, which is on the next slide. Uh, if you look at the if you look at the chart to the left, this is what's been happening to us. The first part of June was kind of a crescendo. Uh, we had a lot of good traffic, and it's been uh, tailing off a little bit ever since. Uh, we were averaging at one point about 5,900 outbound passengers per day uh, through the TSA uh, checkpoint. Uh, it did drop down to 49. We're back at about 51 and 50. We monitor this every day um, because this has such repercussions on our concessions, on our parking, on those jobs that we talked about. One thing I'm very, very proud of our team and our relationship with our, our air carrier partners is their investment here in Cleveland. I talked about it over 17, 18, 19, and it continues into 20. Uh, if you look at the, the chart to your right, the light blue bar is the total U.S. investment in new seats into a marketplace by the air carriers, uh, and it's month over month averages. Uh, you can see Cleveland is coming out far on above. Uh, June, same picture. May, same picture. And so that gap between us and the U.S. was continuing to expand. Uh, through June or through July, however, with the most recent spike in our biggest markets, New York, Arizona, Texas, particularly Florida, um, this number is now being reduced across the nation, but in here in Cleveland as well. So uh, we have those regular calls to try to figure out how it's going to uh, affect us as a marketplace and us as a business. 
Uh, just reminding people that uh, the airlines, because of our master lease agreement here, they stand behind all the indebtedness of the airport. So there is no taxpayer uh, funds from the city of Cleveland or from uh, the county that flow into the airport. So we're trying to make sure that we keep our costs down, our revenue up, and that we plan for that brighter future. So speaking of the brighter future, um, here's what we think is going to happen. Uh, this was compiled by our master plan um, uh, engineers and analysts and so forth on what we think recovery will be. Uh, you see 2019 where the solid black line leads, uh, stops. Uh, you see the purple line that says what is happening to us and, uh, and uh, what is called the terminal area forecast from FAA. Uh, this is the, uh, the reference book for all of us as, at airports. Uh, and in fact, if your forecast is going to be out of 10% uh, tolerance, isn't that the correct, Nick? 10% right. tolerance from the FAA forecast, you have to go through a procedure. Now, I have been in this business for a long time, and last year was the first time I had ever experienced the FAA revising a forecast for my airport uh, because of the activity, and it was an upward forecast. Uh, then COVID hit, and you see that where it says number one. Number one in 2024 is where we think we'll be back to 2019 levels. Now. It could be that we get a little better jump uh, um, because of Cleveland's past history, the things we're doing. It could be at point two where we rejoin our original forecast from the master plan. And then point three, four, and five, so forth over the planning, five-year planning horizons. It's bad news in the fact that we've got four years basically. Um, the, the forecast generally within the industry is three to four year uh, uh, return to 19 levels uh, for domestic, five to seven years for uh, international. Companies are changing their behavior, particularly on business travel, uh, which was the, uh, the bedrock of our uh, September, October numbers. Uh, that's part of the softening of the market here in Cleveland particularly. And uh, the COVID, not having a vaccine, the fear of it, and so forth. So we have some planning horizon adjustments, but at the end of the day, with the, with the different planning horizon, and uh, master plans are triggered by plan, planning activity levels, not years. So when you reach certain planning activity levels, you trigger uh, design, development, construction of the facilities. Um, and uh, it, uh, it is important that we understand it is not in 2024 something will happen. It's when we reach that particular planning activity level. Now, if that happens in 23 or 25 or 22, that's when we trigger the master plan recommendations. So let's go to one more, and then we'll talk about the master plan. Key for us is that uh, certainly since March, uh, the city's financial people, our financial people, the airlines, we've all been talking with the, the rating agencies. Uh, um, you know, we were quite proud that uh, in August of 2018 that we received uh, three rating agency increases, all within the investment grade of A. Uh, that was absolutely wonderful. And then uh, we received one more the following year from Fitch raised us again. And uh, we had been very good about reducing the airline's cost here through a lot of the actions that we've taken uh, to, to reduce reliance upon the airline revenue. Uh, and we've been reducing debt significantly. Cleveland Hopkins carries uh, a, a large amount of legacy debt and we were trying to reduce that down because as we go forward with the master plan, we're only able to do what we can finance. And carrying a lot of past debt is, uh, would be a hindrance. Uh, not having investment grade uh, ratings by the uh, rating agencies 
uh, would be a hindrance. In fact, that raising to A level uh, really saved us in the long term financing of the master plan implementation. It probably saved the airlines tens of millions of dollars. So small, significant changes have huge long term impacts. So reducing our debt, reducing our reliance upon the airlines, and keeping that uh, rating agency uh, rating important. And we, we have maintained it. It has not changed um, since COVID. Next one, please. So our master plan, uh, Mayor Jackson uh, kicked us off in October of last year. Uh, it is a 20 year planning horizon. By the time we, uh, uh, we look at it, it is really uh, a quarter century we're talking about. Uh, and these are the f important um, cornerstones of a, of a master plan and particularly for us here in Cleveland. Uh, to be an efficient airport, an efficient airport worldwide, there must be a balance between your airfield, your terminal, landside, and airspace. If any one of those is out of balance, you cannot be an uh, efficient airport. That's globally. Currently, or pre-COVID, we were out of balance in two of those areas, our terminal and our land side. Our terminal did not have gate hold areas that were designed nor built for the type critical aircraft. Our land side access along the roadways and uh, parking and so forth were not accommodating the change to O and D traffic, uh, origin and destination. Our origin and destination passengers now are, make up about 97% of our, um, of our travelers. The airspace was redesigned two years ago with the FAA um, that is probably adequate to meet us for the next 20 years. And then our airfield is, uh, we need to do some work on it. However, two, run, or two parallel runways and one crosswind is probably um, doable for us for the next 20 years, even though we need to replace a runway, certainly. Uh, it needs to, master plan needs to respond uh, to the immediate and near, near, near term needs. Yes, our passenger numbers are down. Uh, but still, our immediate near-term needs are this facility is old. Um, we took out a bond. Um, the airlines authorized us to take out a bond uh, um, year before last in 2018 uh, for $35 million to help bridge us to our first master plan, the benefit of first master plan implementation. That implementation of the master plan is going to be pushed off. Uh, so we have some more near-term and immediate needs for the facility. Future growth and opportunities. I've lived through many ups and downs in the industry. I, I remember being in Atlanta on nine, uh, for the 9-11 and recovery, and uh, I said if I could have made it through 9-11, I can make it through anything. And then I went through the economic downturn, I went through the bankruptcies in the early 90s, the bubble crash in, in the late 90s. I got to tell you, COVID is the, the biggest challenge. There is no playbook. We're pulling out every stop the team is. I'm quite proud of what we're doing. So positioning for the growth and opportunities of the future, there will be less aircraft flying. Uh, there is one estimate that says 45% of commercial aircraft will still be parked at the end of next year. So with less aircraft in the air, less crews, there's gonna be greater competition for, uh, for air service. It's gonna be, be fierce. We are a fierce competitor. We have been positioning ourselves for that competition. Growth will come, opportunities will come. We must be agile and we must be prepared. Customer experience. Anybody who's known me for the last 20 years knows my focus on customer experience. Um, one, first, last impression of, the, of uh, the region, the city, a lot of times comes here at the airport. So we have to do all that we can do to make that a good experience. There are also financial reasons that you want to make, uh, make the customer experience good. One, it helps with non-aeronautical revenue. Happy people spend more money in our concessions which helps our local businesses, which helps local people be employed. Optimize our assets and recent investments. 
our assets. We have roughly 2,200 acres here. Uh, it's a valuable uh, asset. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been invested, and we need to maximize that. The recent investments that we made, I, I mentioned a while ago about the $35 million, uh, and that we had pl uh, that we are putting into the facility to bridge us, uh, we need to extend that a bit and so that we uh, maximize how we can use them to take us into that brighter future. The last one, preserve Cleveland's identity and strengths. That's not just the airport's identity and strength, it is our city, it is the communities that we serve, it is how we create the economic vitality by using the, the tool that's called air transportation. And so I, uh, some of the airports I've been in around the world, you step off the aircraft, you immediately know, and I'll, I'll use Vancouver as a good example. If anybody's been to Vancouver, you step off the aircraft, you know you're in the northwest part of the North America. Uh, there are other airports around the world that you step off, Singapore, which is, it's probably the Cadillac model for uh, airport uh, ambiance. You know you're in Singapore. So I want people to know they're in Cleveland. You're, we have a lot of strengths. We're a lot of firsts, and we need to preserve that. So a 20-year plan uh, that balances uh, all of these things and takes these, and we've got good working groups, cross-sections of the community, the region, uh, and so forth to help us, and we've got a qualified firm. Can you go to the next slide? Uh, here's our, uh, our schedule. Uh, we've already been working um, since the fall of last year. The, the engineers, uh, environmental overview is uh, vitally important. Uh, looking existing conditions, uh, part of, a critical part of every master plan is a snapshot of where you are uh, and what the facilities are uh, condition. And then the next step there, the aviation forecast was almost finished when COVID, so it had to be revised. So you existing conditions tell you where you are. The aviation forecast tell you where you need to be. And then that tells you what facility requirements to meet that future need. And with those planning activity levels, tells you at what time. Now, I, uh, I've helped a lot of airports with master plans. I've only been through two other master plans myself. Uh, this will make my third. But no one ever agrees on a single plan. So there are a lot of alternatives looked at uh, that we're, our, our, in, our uh, consultants will start with very soon. And, discussing input. Uh, we talked a lot on our calls yesterday about a regional approach. Uh, we talked about concepts that, uh, of uh, experience and, and so forth. And so you come up with a lot of alternatives and then you come down to what's called the preferred alternative. This is the one that most people will say, okay, I can live with that. It works well. It fits within the required or requirements. And our, our plan is by the end of this year that we have a preferred alternative that is taken in stakeholder um, uh, uh, input, uh, the science of, uh, of uh, terminals and the business that we're in. And that preferred alternative is, uh, is put forward looking at a financial and implementation plan. And then finally, uh, the FAA approval for uh, what's two parts are needed from the master plan approval. Uh, that is for our forecast, which you see that is early on, that uh, they haven't approved it yet. I think they're like all the rest of us. They're trying to figure it out and what, uh, how we go forward. And then what's called our airport layout plan must be approved by the FAA. Now, one distinction that I must make on this master plan versus other master plan. This is completely funded by the airlines. There is no federal money in this master plan. Um, as we have been talking to the airlines over the last few years about the future, their investments, uh, they said they agree. There needed to be investments in Cleveland. However, we needed a good plan. 
Uh, FA uh, was not at a point where they could have uh, uh, had any funding. In fact, I think it was 2023 was probably the, the, the Nick's shaking his head yes. 2023 was the first time that the FAA uh, could kick in any funding. We back, went back to the carriers, uh, had a discussion, and the discussion was waiting uh, was not a, a real option for us here in Cleveland. So our airline partners are funding this, and for us to tap into future FAA money, we must follow the FAA process. So we're following the strict process of the FAA. So at a future date, we can come back and say, you know, now that you've got a little bit of money, how about helping us out with the implementation? If we had not followed the FAA uh, approved process, they would say you would have to do an FAA master plan uh, process. So we had to have started all over again. So we're skipping that future uh, issue. Next one, please. This is a, a busy, a busy, busy slide, and I apologize, uh, but it takes in the five components that are of a master plan that are very important. The pre-planning, we've been doing that. COVID has not started, uh, stopped us in that. The investigative phase still has not uh, stopped us in that. This is the behind the scenes work we had anticipated going out much earlier in the process, but because of the, the situation. Uh, in fact, uh, one of our consultants who's been on a lot of master plan, yesterday was his first ever master plan stakeholder committee engagement virtually. And so like with this, this body, we're trying to figure it out. Solutions and implementation phase is uh, where uh, we're at. Uh, and then the final part that seeks FAA approval is where we document all the research, all the science, all the input, and we say this is our, our suggested plan. At the bottom, public community involvement. Uh, this is key. Stakeholders need to be felt on what they think. Now, it can be something that cannot be doable, but it's still valuable input. So we started out with our uh, our advisory committee meetings yesterday, working group and executive, community outreach starts uh, this presentation today, and the idea is that we get by the end of the year, first quarter of next year, we get to that preferred alternative where we're saying, based on all the science, based on all the engineering, based on all the information that we have, we think this is the direction that will prepare a brighter future for us. And uh, it's a lot of work. As I, uh, as I explained to a lot of the people yesterday, and certainly my team and um, uh, the downtown team, they know that we've been doing a lot of work, and they've been doing a lot of work, but more work is yet to come. So with that, I'm going to be quiet, see if anybody has any, um, any comments, suggestions, questions. Uh, we have a, a website set up. Uh, where we will post uh, lots of presentations, information as is developed, meeting schedules as they come up, and it's clevelandairportmasterplan.com, and the, the slash, uh, slash comments provides comment. But I invite everybody, particularly this body, to, to look at it and become, uh, to become uh, familiar with it, because I think you will get a lot of questions from your constituents. Uh, Chairperson, I, I, we, uh, uh, Councilman Slice has his hand up. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, um, Director. Uh, if you can take down your slides so we can see everyone. Yes, ma'am. Here we go. Okay. okay, great, great. Thank you so much. Thank you for that uh, very thorough. Uh, presentation, you know, it's important for us to understand, you know, where we were, how we were pre-COVID, you know, particularly with the, the, the downturn in the economy a few years ago and the de-hubbing of United. And, you know, there was a time when the airport looked to be in critical condition and certainly over the years um, and right up until, you know, February, looking very bright, very rosy, and everything seems upwards. So, um, you know, we appreciate that that perspective is, is helpful for us. 
and again, giving us an overview of what the process is going to be like over the next few years. We understand it's not just going to be, you know, like a typical master plan for another project, but we're planning for our airport and our city for the next 20 years under some various circumstances. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's going to be challenging, but it's going to be interesting. Um, um, and so we're, um, you know, I encourage my colleagues, you know, take a look at the website. It it's, has a lot of information on it, a lot of good information. And, and the, and the uh, actually the airport's website, general air, site, air uh, website is also very interesting if you haven't taken a really good look at it. Um, just a couple of things, and then I will just, um, you know, let my colleagues ask questions. Uh, a lot of mine were answered uh, in the meeting yesterday, but um, you know, one thing I from yesterday's meeting, um, uh, there was a, a statement of you know what the airport airport master plan is not, and just you know for clarification for you know um, our members and for the general public. You know, this is not a, a construction project. It's not an actual plan or commitment um, in, in the traditional sense, but it uh, it will guide us in doing the things that we need to do to ensure the survivability, survivability, uh, the sustainability, and you know that our airport is um, uh, as outstanding as we can make it over the next few years. You know, in those few in those four areas. Um, uh, that you mentioned airfield and terminal land, you know, land side airspace, you know, also technology, um, the customer experience and all of those things that go into making a great airport. Um, so, you know, we're not uh, building a construction project or plan, but, you know, we are going to position ourselves uh, so that when the time is right, uh, we're, we're, we make the necessary investments and the necessary development and upgrades to the airport. Um, I know one of the other statements made yesterday is that, um, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, that nothing would be done uh, or implemented before it's time. So again, you know, it's not like we're going to plan it and then we're just going to build it because we planned it. But, you know, we have to be uh, positioned and ready and, of course, you know, financially in a position to do that. And, uh, and, and I uh, also note that this is something that we are required to do by the FAA. So again, it's not just something that we're embarking on because we, you know, we think it's time and, and we haven't updated the airport in a while. So um, just wanted to make a few, a few comments to that. And, and, and with that, I'm gonna turn the floor over to the Transportation Committee Vice Chair, Councilman Slife. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I'm excited to see this presentation today, be engaged moving forward. Uh, this is obviously important work and all of us want our airport to uh, be the best version of itself. Uh, in a sense, uh, it, it, it's almost, uh, it's kind of good that air travels down because with social distancing, the airport's so old and there's not a lot of space that I'm not confident that if we were at full capacity that there'd be an ability to um, socially distance. So you, there's kind of the Southwest Airlines holding pen as you're waiting for the flights to come in. Uh, is there any kind of thought moving forward, uh, you know, at, at least for the next couple of years, but maybe in the long term, kind of the permanent effects of this crisis and our need to have just more space for people to spread out within the terminal? Uh, to the councilman through the uh, chairperson, we are constrained by the physical limits of the of the airport uh, of the of the building itself. It was built um, pre 9/11. Uh, in the future, people will say airports are built pre COVID 19. Uh, we have taken out some tables and chairs. Uh, we uh, monitor the throughput of the checkpoint. Uh, in fact, we. We try to make sure that customers and guests are, are spaced, but there is no way that we can monitor every square foot. The airlines, uh, the local managers here try to help us with that uh, in their areas uh, and to do it, but expanding any of the physical plant 
is tough um, because of the age, condition, and the cost. Uh, but taking out furniture and monitoring the throughput so that we don't exceed the limits that have been established by uh, the state and the city for uh, COVID distancing. Uh, the requirement of mask, uh, the, the, the number of um, hand sanitizing stations that the commissioner has put throughout the, the terminal, we're, we're trying to make the best that we can. Sure, and I think, you know, this, this crisis really highlights, especially in the A and B terminals, uh, the <laughs> really it underscores how kind of urban archaic they are. If you're flying through, I think it's gate B8, uh, which is the Southwest gate, it can barely hold half of the plane, you know? So it's, uh, as I know we're constrained by our physical space, but I think there's a recognition in the community that at some point in the future, uh, there might be a need to, uh, you know, construct, expand something to that matter. And I know that that's not necessarily what this is about, uh, but it's it's just something that's on everyone's mind. Um, an another question I have uh, when when we talk about land side, does that expand out to uh, kind of off campus, like the rental car facility? Like what what is the scope of the master plan? Is it solely kind of airfield airfield immediate adjacent? How far out does it go? Uh, through the chairperson to the councilman, uh, as I like to say, everything is on the table. Um, the rental car facility that we have now is a extremely low service level for our customers. Uh, you have to put them on a bus uh, to put them over there. It's not easy to find. Um, so the master plan will look at every facility related to the airport. That's parking roadway, regional uh, access, rental cars, cargo facilities, fuel, you anything that, that is the ecosystem of the airport. And, and my interviews are, we've done a lot of uh, interviews with the, the people who actively engage with the airport every day uh, are, as part of that investigation. And uh, one of the things that keeps rising to the top, and I'm looking to Nick to my right here, because he was in a lot of that, was that the rental car facility, we need to come up with a different plan. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, a, a different plan. We need to get people off of shuttle buses. Going back to your comment about uh, um, COVID and how it affects us, people do not want to be on shuttle buses. Uh, and we need to have it walkable uh, uh, to, uh, to them to find their cars uh, and to uh, uh, drop them off when they come. So that's the... Uh, that's the ecosystem. Sure. Um, well, and, and I'm glad that's part of the consideration. I'd say even in the near term, you had mentioned you get off the plane your first time in Cleveland, the airport's the front door. Uh, for a lot of people, business trip, whatever it is, uh, I think that their first real introduction to the city of Cleveland is driving down Cleveland Parkway after they picked up the rental car. It, it, you know, there's just this big emptiness. It feels like you're driving on a highway in Michigan where you're going to dunk, to dunk, to dunk. You hit Rock River Drive. Like I don't think that's a great front door for us either. So any ability to even kind of think of that in the nearer term of how we can consider that as part of the front door too, I, I think would be a, a worthwhile conversation. So uh, through the council per, uh, to the council person through the chair. Um, last year, the commissioner spent a million dollars on Maplewood Avenue. Uh, <laughs> we had to first get it to the airport. There are uh, what's called revenue diversion laws, uh, federal regulations. If we don't own it and have possession of it, we can't spend money on it. So we had to get Maplewood Avenue uh, put over to us. We repaved it. Uh, so those are things that we look at as well is what does, how can we better um, serve the customer um, within our limitations. The tough part going forward is any indebtedness here um, has to be financed by the carriers. And with them losing billions of dollars, um, it's going to be hard to finance in the very near term. But they are they are working with us every day uh, on how we can all take care of our, our mutual interest. Right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Councilman Sly. Uh, are there any other questions, comments? Okay, okay. Uh, I think that's it, Director. Um, 
Uh, just one thing I um, meant to ask you to, to introduce who's at the table with you. I don't recognize everybody with the mask on, but I know they're you know very important part of your team. Absolutely, they're an important part in, in the, the, the dozens upon dozens of people behind them. Uh, I like to say they're just the pretty faces, but they're also pretty smart and hardworking. Uh, to my re right is our uh, planning manager, Nick Belliardo. Uh, he has been really leading the charge on uh, the master plan. If he works less than 100 hours a week, I don't know it because I get emails from him at 1 o'clock in the morning and so forth. So he has been driving a lot of this for the last year uh, and getting us ready for, uh, for this important step. Across the table for him, the guy with the black mask, uh, that is uh, Dennis Kramer. He is our Chief of Planning and Engineering, uh, and uh, he is new to us. We're really glad to have his airport and construction experience uh, uh, here at the airport, and Nick works for with, uh, with Dennis and the Planning and Engineering team. Across uh, the table for me is uh, Commissioner Berger. Uh He is the ever effervescent uh, life of the party, and um, of all the people who put in time here, uh, I will. I run into him here on Sundays and holidays and so forth. He cares about this place. He pours his heart and soul, and he is the day-to-day -day operations of the airport. And uh, I got to tell you, I could not do this job without his help. Uh, to his right and to my left is John Hogan. John Hogan is in our uh, marketing and air service development group. Uh, a lot of the statistics you see, the forecasting. Uh, I, I like to say that I am a very good forecaster. I've had 20 years of forecasting. I was pretty dang good. John's better than I am. He beat me. I had a contest, a very public contest, uh, when we first came here, uh, and he beat me publicly. Uh, but in helping, the airport is, is about today and not so much about yesterday. And it's mostly and certainly about tomorrow. We have what's called lumpy assets, and it's hard to make a move and to energize them and to implement them. And the forecasting that John does, along with our financial consultant, the RSNH team, really helps us plot a course. So that's just four of the people of the team that are working very hard for the communities that we serve to make this something we're all proud of, and that one day we'll say to our grandkids and whoever else, our neighbors, I had part of that. Like you, I mean, in the, the, the council, we're going to have, we are competitive. We have been doing an outstanding job and we're only going to do better. And it's because our ecosystem works together. So thank you for that. I was very remiss in not introducing them. Okay, thank you, Director. And also, I'll give a shout out to our, our legislative liaison, Kevin Shaw. Um, <laughs> I don't think he's on the call today, but you know, Kevin's also a great help to us. Uh, with that, thank you again, Director, and to all of your team and to my committee members and colleagues, I thank you and uh, transportation committees adjourned. Thank you all. Good day, all.